Hello, this is uh, Reverend James Hutchings with my thoughts for the week ahead. Uh, I have, you may notice here, uh, a jug and uh, a bottle of wine, and you uh, may think that's some kind of ironic reflection upon uh, events in the Downing Street Garden. It's not any commentary on that, I hasten uh, to add, uh, tempting though that might be. Um, it's uh, as a symbol of the gospel reading that we are focusing on this coming Sunday, which is about the uh, wedding that Jesus attended uh, in uh, Galilee, uh, right at the start of his ministry. And uh, it's also uh, made me think about uh, something to look forward to this year, which is in this uh, cold and perhaps slightly bleak January time, looking forward to all of the lovely weddings that we're going to be having at St Mary's uh, this year, a bumper year uh, after the pandemic, uh, being able to have uh, more weddings. And so that's something that's very exciting to be looking forward to. And in, the story is about a wedding which Jesus attended and the uh, symbolism of that. So I'm first of all going to uh, read that to you. This is from uh, the start of the second chapter of John's Gospel uh, and goes as follows. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When the wine gave out the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine and Jesus said to her woman what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were t six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Uh, there's something slightly curious in that reading where Jesus talks to his mother, say it calls her woman. Uh, it's, a, it's a rather inadequate English translation of the way in which would have been quite, actually quite natural to have talked to his mother at that time. Um, but it's about uh, a number of things, this reading. It's, uh, in, in, in big terms, it's, a, it's about a demonstration of who Jesus is. It's part of the uh, revelation that he is not simply uh, a wise teacher uh, or uh, skilled with... Um, uh, being able to heal others or uh, it's that he is in fact being revealed as God's son uh, and that uh, this is one of the uh, first indications of that that we focus on at this time of year in this season of epiphany about all of those moments like the visit of the of the uh, the wise men uh, to indicate that Jesus is the is the uh, son of God for all people, not just for the Jewish people, um, uh, and about uh, other stories which show that uh, Jesus is truly going to be the light of the world. But there's some specifics in here as well. Uh, particularly, it's about a story of transformation, that uh, Jesus is about transformation, transforming us, transforming our world, transforming all of creation uh, and about taking what seems inadequate and indeed a failure if you think of a party you've organized or a wedding and uh, the wine running out or some such uh, that's a real can be a real disaster and so often in our lives we have what is indeed a, a disaster at one level but something that can be transformed. And the transformation here is amazing because there's a huge abundance of wine. These jars of 20 or 30 gallons transformed uh, from water into wine. And it's not only a sign of transformation, it's a sign of the sheer abundance of 
uh, God's kingdom, uh, that we have that to look forward to. And uh, it's why uh, the Holy Communion is at the centre of, uh, of our worship, because it's a little glimpse, if you like, of that great banquet in the kingdom of heaven that we are all invited to and can all uh, look forward to. So it's a lovely story that we have to focus on uh, this Sunday uh, and one that can make us think about that abundance, about that transformation um, and about how um, our significant relationships, not just weddings, not just marriages, but uh, all of those relationships of love are blessed and uh, 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 looked on with great love and affection by God uh, because they're glimpses of God's love. So this coming Sunday we have our usual pattern of services just to highlight a couple of things at our 10 o'clock service. Uh, Jeffrey Barnett will be preaching on that gospel reading and then uh, we're also going to have a word from uh, Anna Khan who's the chief executive of Wellcare. Uh, Wellcare in Southwark is uh, in, in the Diocese of Southwark is an agency that's existed from the uh, the end of the 19th century, working with families and children, uh, supporting them, strengthening families in all sorts of ways. And it's one of the charities that we have supported for some time here at St Mary's. And Anna is going to be coming and talking about that work. Uh, and uh, so uh, if you'd like to know more about that, do come along on Sunday and there'll be inf further information about Wellcare at the service. Also to say at six o'clock our evening services are once a month service called Sunday at six where uh, members of the congregation lead uh, a time of, of, of reflection and of prayer. This Sunday uh, I'm going to be assisting Julie, Julie Smith, who's going to be uh, particularly reflecting on this new year time, the way in which we can have the new year blues and anxieties. Um, and the reading is going to, she's going to be reflecting on is from Psalm 46, which contains the wonderful words, be still and know that I am God. Uh, so if you want a time of reflection and of quiet in the lovely Langton Chapel on Sunday, do come along at six o'clock for Sunday at six. So I'm just going to conclude with the words of the collect, the special prayer for this coming Sunday which talk about that transformation that Jesus brings. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.